chapter 2. I think the uh, kids' uh, children's church is going down now if they'd like to go. Acts chapter 2. Beginning in verse 41. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There is a move underfoot today, it seems, in a lot of churches to be very, very centered on meeting the wants of people, trying to appeal to people. Because there's never been a day, I'm not saying that we're more, more persecuted, certainly not, than the first century church, but there's never been a day that, that doing church is any harder than this one. This day. So people are, leaders are looking for ways that they can make the church more appealing. And the problem with that is, number one, it's, it's an impossible task. And number two, I believe it's an unholy one. Because scripture says that we are not to try to meet the wants of people, but we are to meet their needs. So I'm speaking to you on this subject. Being the kind of church that people need. Not necessarily what they want, but what they need. How do you know if you have one? Well, there's three or four things that I want to share with you that people need from church. Number one, they need a preaching church. A preaching church. It seems today that most people want churches that are heavy on singing, and this is coming from someone who's with a singing group. Keep that in mind. But we want churches that are heavy on singing, heavy on fellowship, and real light on preaching. I want to look at some things concerning the church and its preaching. First, let's look at the source. What are we to preach? What is our message to focus on? We're to preach the scriptures, the Bible. You don't need to hear a message from some book that I pick up, although we do quote sometimes from readers. You need to hear a message from God's Word, from the Bible. The churches that are really being used of God in incredible ways today have that focus. The preaching is from God's Word. 
the source. Second, there's the subject. What's the subject of our preaching? We need to preach on sin. You don't hear a lot of that today, but we need to. You need to preach on salvation. You need to tell people what the fix is for the sin problem. Salvation. Then we need to preach on sanctification. That means being clean. After they realize they are sinners and after they are saved, then the scripture tells us how to live. How to live clean. Sin, salvation, sanctification. That's the subject. We need a preaching church. If it's me or anybody that ever comes into this pulpit, if they are not preaching you the word of God, then those of you who are in places of leadership need to stand up and say, we need the Bible. We need the book. Preaching church. Second, a praying church. A praying church. The reason we need to be a praying church is because folks desperately need to know that we're concerned about them. There are so many people out in this world today that are just wandering around and Angie could come and share this really more effectively than I could because she's right out there in the trenches. So many people out there today that's just wandering around and they're looking for something. Do you know why sometimes some of these cults are so successful it's because they go out and meet these people and they offer them a glimmer of hope. And they veil the real message. And people will just grab it and they'll hold on to it because they're looking for something. The reason people need a praying church is so that they'll know that somebody cares about them. The Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost. We know that. But it was only after the believers had gathered together and prayed. They were in prayer meeting. And it was at that time that the Holy Spirit fell. You go back and you do a study of church history and you'll find that every time there was a great period of revival, when scores of people were converted, there's one thing that happened in every instant. There was a great time of prayer. There was a great awakening to the need of prayer. People need a preaching church. People need a praying church. People need a personable church. By that I mean a friendly church. A friendly church. Now you understand I am not saying that we are to condone sinfulness. That's not what this point is about. No. No, we always uphold the standard of the Word of God. But folks, if you look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, He went home with people who were sinners. And he sat down at their table. He reached out to them. And he was successful time and time and time again because those people knew that the religious community of that day, the Pharisees and others, they would have walked on the other side of the street to avoid these people. They knew that they would not get any compassion from them. The Lord Jesus Christ went to them where they were. Whether it was a woman at a well or whether it was a tax collector, He went to them where they were, hated and despised as many of them were, condemned by the religious community. He went to them. And he loved them. 
I told our people Wednesday night. We were talking about the importance of being a friendly church. And I had read somewhere that people decide in 12 minutes when they go visit a church whether they're going to like it or whether they aren't. That means from the time that you, and, it, and it, you know, it varies depending on how big the church is or whatever. But by the time they leave their vehicle, walk into church and find themselves a seat in that 12 minute or so period of time, they have already decided whether this is a friendly church or whether it isn't. Folks, one of the saddest commentaries that could be said about any church, whether it's this one or any other one, is that I went to that church and I did not feel welcome. No one reached out to me. That's a great condemnation on any church's part. And folks, it doesn't have anything to do with size. I've heard for years that if you're in a big church, it isn't friendly. There ain't nothing to that. Absolutely not. Some of the most friendly churches I've ever been to are huge mega churches. And oftentimes they'll say, well, it's the little churches, you know, they're just so friendly. No, not always. No. I've went to churches, Terry and I have went to churches before and sung, and they were small churches. And I looked out in the audience and I, I, I thought, I don't know if we're going to get out here or not. These people are tickled to death to see us. You know? Especially when you got a crazy drummer. <laughs> no, size doesn't have anything at all to do with whether a church is friendly or unfriendly. Nothing. No, it's an attitude whether it's big or whether it's small, if it's in here, it'll get out to people. Need a personable church, a, pre, a preaching church, a, a praying church, and a positive church. That's what people need. You know why people need a positive church? Because all day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, or the time that particularly that they're out in the world doing whatever they do, you know what they're going to be met with most of the time? Just negative things. Over and over and over. You can get on your Facebook and you'll find some people on there that are just so positive and they're so uplifting. And then you'll find about the other 90%. And, they, and, and you know, they're on there ranting and raving. And, and uh, if you get on Facebook sometimes and, and you feel worse than when you got on it, you need to go down your friends list and check them out. You, you, need, to, you need to delete some. You need to eliminate some. No. The world finds that all the time. This world is so negative. And I realize that we have a lot of problems in the world. But folks, people, when they come to the house of God, they need something affirmative, something positive in their life. If we can't offer them that, then we're not helping them. Again, it would be so condemning for someone to come to church and everyone was so negative. They leave there and think, I didn't get a thing because I feel just as down and out and disturbed and despondent and negative as when I came in. I can get that in the world. And I don't have to listen to a boring preacher. And they just stay. It's understandable. Folks don't need more negativism. They need something positive. Let me give you one more. People need a preaching church. Oh, yeah. A praying church. A 
personable, friendly church, a positive church, and a progressive church. I'm almost... I was almost tempted to leave that off because I was afraid someone would misunderstand. But I think most of you know that I am so conservative that I am certainly not suggesting that we blend, that we water down. No, 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 no. It'll not be in this pulpit as long as I'm here and have any right mind which is subject to change. But... No. Progressive doesn't always mean that we soft sell. That we tell people, well, they make this sin issue big and you know, you miss the boat every now and then and and really you are what you are because society made you that way. Hogwash. We are what we are. My sweet wife drills this home in her Wednesday night girls class. We are what we are because of choices that we make. It's about choices. No matter what it is, we decide what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. It's choices. And it's so unfortunate today that in an attempt to reach more people, we try to soft sell. Folks, we must never diminish the standard. Now, it must be preached, taught. It must be communicated in love. I can take my Bible out here, my old King James Bible, and I can go down here, and I can go into a public place, and I can just go into a rant, beat people over the head with it, and tell them all, y'all are a bunch of lost sinners, y'all going to hell. Now, if they're lost sinners and they don't get saved, where are they going? They're going to hell. So have I said the truth? Yeah. But my attitude is so important. And when I'm talking about being progressive... I'm saying that we should always be looking for ways to communicate. Michael came up a moment ago and, and, and got my outline and, and put it down. He's got an app. It was, on, it was up there a moment ago. He's got an app. So, you know, you can, you can watch a live stream. You can do all this stuff. I don't know a thing about it. Nothing. But he does, and we should take advantage of whatever way that God gives us to be able to communicate the good news to folks. Do you know there's a good chance that there will be people that will view this service and they're sitting somewhere, empty in their heart. They didn't go to church this morning. But their heart is empty. And it could be that through that wonderful media that the Holy Spirit would use these stumbling lips to say something through which He would speak to that heart. They could be saved even where they are. No, when I'm talking about being progressive, I'm saying being open. I, I used to love what Jim Lindsay said. Jim pastored this area for many, many years. Great, great preacher. Jim said one time, and I had him up in revival in a former church. He said, brethren, he said, we must never change the message. But, he said, we must always be willing to look for new methods. Never change the message, but always be open to new methods to share the message. That is a progressive church. 
What do people need today? Well, they don't need a church that their focus is to supply their wants because we'll never be able to do that. Not this one, not any other one. You, you, you'll never be able to do that because you're going to find some people that's going to want things that's unattainable. No, what we need to do is be a church that supplies people's needs. And God has given us the way to be able to do that. So as we bow our heads together, you're in the service this morning, whether someone who regularly attends this church or or someone who's just visiting or just, this is just the place that God put you this morning in His sovereign, divine will. You say, Ronnie, I've never been saved. Never. I don't know what I need to do, but I do know that I have never at some time in my life admitted I was a sinner and acknowledged that Jesus Christ really is the Son of God and that He died for my sins. I've never done that. I don't know what I need to do, but I'm going to raise my hand. I want you and these folk here to pray for me. Is there one anywhere? Just raise it. Raise it. Take it back down. Is there one? Someone this morning say, Ronnie, I know I am a Christian. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. And we've talked about the church collectively as a body of believers, and that's what it is. But we must also realize that we are individuals who make up the church, the body. Someone here this morning say, Ronnie, would you remember me in prayer? Because some of the things have spoken to me this morning. Maybe I don't pray like I should for my church and for people. Maybe I'm not as personable. Maybe I'm not as friendly as I should be. Ronnie, there's times in my life that I just get so negative. I get so turned off. And unfortunately, there's been times I know I have given that impression to folk. Ronnie, would you remember me in prayer? Is God bless you. God bless you. Several, several. God bless you. God bless you. You can pray right where you are. If you'd like to talk with me at the end of the service, I would love to talk with you. I'll be back at the back. Well, let's bow and go to God in prayer. Father, Father, I want, to, I, want, I want to begin by just thanking you for the church. The church has gotten a bad rap. And I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about the, the body of Christ, the church in, in general. We've really taken some hard hits. And while much of it may be unjustified, Unfortunately, sometimes it is justified because we failed. Father, I pray. I pray for this local church, but not only for this one, for all churches that will always be people of the book. It's one of the things that always drew me to Baptist. We claim to be people of the book, the Word of God, a preaching church. And Lord, that we'll realize how important prayer is. That we'll just bombard heaven for lost folks. That we'll be a friendly, personable church that people will want to come to. That we'll have a proper attitude, we'll be positive. And Father, help us always to be looking for opportunities to advance the good news through whatever method that you give us. So Father, I pray for these this morning that lifted their hand and no doubt there's many of us in our hearts as well 
are saying, Lord, help us to be that kind of church. Now, Father, be with us as we'll enjoy one of the most beautiful parts of being a Baptist church where we have a time in which we are able to extend a right hand of fellowship in the lives of two wonderful people. For we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Would you